as we've already talked about multiple times. World War I broke out in 1914, and the beginning of it was all about Austria-Hungary declaring war on Serbia using the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand as the pretext for declaring war on Serbia. This was in July, July 28, 1914, they declare war on Serbia. And if you were a military analyst at the time, you would have assumed that this would have been kind of a quick action. And this is why, frankly, Austria-Hungary was so eager to declare war on Serbia. They thought it would be very easy for them to put the Serbians out of commission. Austria-Hungary, you're talking about this empire here, huge economy, huge military industrial complex, huge army. Serbians, much smaller country, much poorer country. They had also fought several recent wars. They were very ill-equipped. So any military analyst would thought that this would be a short war. But 1914 did not prove that way for the Austro-Hungarians. And this actually could be viewed as a huge victory, a huge surprise for the Serbians, that the Serbians were able to keep the Austro-Hungarians back. Serbians, Serbians hold. Now, this isn't to say that it wasn't incredibly, incredibly, incredibly bl bloody. You've had several offensives across the border into Serbia. The Austro-Hungarians briefly captured Belgrade, then the Serbians captured it back. In the meantime, tens and hundreds of thousands of folks were dying. But at the end of 1914, you would have surprised the military analysts, and the Serbians were able to hold despite being less equipped uh, and, and despite just being a, a, a smaller country. Now, the luck for the Serbians did not hold out that well as we go into 1915. By 1915, other parties other than the Austro-Hungarians decided to get involved, against, get involved against the Serbians. In particular, you have the Bulgarians that prior to 1915, they were kind of trying to figure out who, which side of the war they want to fall in on. But they have had several battles or several wars recently with Serbia, one in, as recently as 1913. They were eager to capture back some territory. So in 1915, the Bulgarians joined the war on the side of the Central Powers. And as we exit 1915, you have a joint offensive between the Bulgarians, the Austro-Hungarians, and the Germans against this small country, against this small country of Serbia. And the Germans' interest, other than the fact that they wanted to support their, their ally, Austro the Austria, they were also eager to take control of the railways between Berlin and Constantinople. And that railway went, went into, went into Serbia. And so if they were able to capture this, take Serbia out of the war, then they would able to they would be able to send supplies much more easily to the to the Ottoman to their other ally, the Ottoman Empire. So on October of 1915, October of 1915, you have a joint offensive between the German army and this is what this map right here is de depicting right over here. This is the 3rd Austrian army. This is the 11th German army. This is the first Bulgarian army. This is the second Bulgarian army. And their joint offensive is hugely successful for the Central Powers. They're essentially able to roll into Serbia. It's actually impressive on the side of the Serbians that it took this much force for, to be able to roll through Serbia. But they were able to roll through Serbia, essentially occupy all of Serbia. They put the Serbian army on the run. And, and the only redeeming thing is that some for the Serbians is that some element of the Serbian army was actually able to escape through Montenegro and Albania and, and some of the civilians. And then they were transported by the allies, by the Entente, to be able to recuperate and then join, as we'll see, on the Macedonian front. So 1915, 1915, you have the Central Powers, Central Powers roll through Serbia. Roll, roll through, through Serbia. So from from you know to any observer right now, Serbia is essentially lost. Now, right when that was happening, the the Allies had recognized that Serbia was in a de very difficult situation. And as we got to the end of 1915, they did start the French and British troops did start to land, did start to land in Salonika, right over here, in order to. Uh, one would think help the Serbian help the Serbian forces. Now they weren't able to arrive and act in enough time to prevent what happened in October of October of 1915. You have some French forces that were able to essentially distract the Bulgarian Second Army that uh, aided to some degree the Serbian retreat. But essentially they started to build they started to build their own forces right over here in Salonika. Now this is interesting because we're talking about this region. 
right over here, kind of Macedonian Greece. And at this point in the war, Greece had stayed neutral. The king was leaning towards King Constantine I. He was leaning towards the central powers, while the prime minister, and I want to, I'm sure I'm going to say this incorrectly, Venizelos, he was leaning towards the ally parties. And so you started to have this kind of disconnect between the two. And the prime minister resigns, but he has active support, especially, especially in kind of Macedonian, especially in Macedonian Greece. And obviously he has support, he has support amongst the allies. So as you go into 1916, as you go into 1916, you have a coup for Venizelos in, the, in Macedonian Greece, especially in, in around Salonika, which is essentially being held by the Allies, even though Greece is essentially is, is officially neutral. So coup, coup for Venizelos, Venizelos, which leads to a very interesting situation. So after the coup for Venizelos, you essentially have Greece, kind of Macedonian Greece, is under the control of uh, supporters of Venizelos and supporters of the Allies, while the rest of Greece, while the rest of Greece is still is still loyal to the king, and the king is leaning towards the central powers, but it's not really clear what 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 he wants to do about it. Then you get into 1917, the Allies start to get a little bit forceful about it. In 1917, they have a blockade. They, they apply a blockade of southern Greece. Obviously, blockades are always inflict a lot of hardship, economic hardship, human hardship uh, on civilians. But this essentially forces, in June, in June of 1917, Constantine I, Constantine, Constantine goes into exile. And essentially, at this point, all of Greece is under, is, is kind of a, a, a supporting the allies, and Greece goes on the side of the allies. So in this map right over here that shows kind of the allied powers, the, the Entente powers, and the central powers, Greece right over here is depicted as an allied power, but it was neutral. It was officially neutral as we go through 1917. Only after the overthrow, as uh, only after Constantine I goes into exile, do we have Greece formally formally becoming an ally. And so that set gives us the setup into 1918. So you've had regrouped Serbian forces, and at this point it would be called the Macedonian Front. Serbia has been lost to the Central Powers. You have regrouped Serbian forces at Salonika. They've been transported to Salonika and, and in Greek Macedonian general. You now have the Greek army, who is now on the side of the Allies. You have the British and the French army. And so as we get into September, 1918, they are ready to go on the offensive. And you need to remember what's happening in the rest of Europe at this point. You might remember August 1918. This is the beginning of the Hundred Days Offensive that marked the Allied victory on the Western Front. So news was already getting in there. You had, you had great morale amongst the Allies. You had not so great mo uh, uh, morale amongst the, the Central Powers. And so in 1918, September, you have the Allied Offensive. Allied offensive, allied offensive, coming out of Greece, coming out of, I guess you could call it Macedonian Greece, hugely successful. They're able to retake, they're able to retake Serbia. And actually some of the British forces are able to go east and retake Constantinople. And so this is part, this Macedonian front is part of this overall, we saw on the Western front, kind of the end to the, to the end to the, the central powers ambitions in World War in World War I, and it ends with a, an armistice on this front. And as we know, as we get into November of 1918, you have essentially armistice, armistices or ceasefires on all the major fronts, and the Allies have essentially won.